Imagine being able to share your faith with hundreds of people in a way that is entertaining, constantly evolving, and even life-changing. Coming right up on this month's edition of FaithWorks, you'll meet Audrey Ahern, a young actress who does this professionally for audiences all over the country. Hello again and welcome to another edition of FaithWorks. I'm Jim Grant and it's a privilege each month to bring you what we think is a story of a person whose faith is not just something intellectual, something that they believe, but actually that they put into practice, that they actually act upon and it makes it their life, their passion, their vocation. Today we have a Texas-based artist who is able each week to do things in her life because of being an actor to share her faith across the country. And we're so glad that Audrey Ahern, better known as St. Therese, is here visiting us. She has been in the diocese now visiting the parishes in Tulare and Lamore and Fresno, and we have her here in the studio finally today. Audrey, it's a pleasure to have met you, and I'm wondering if you could begin by telling us as a lifelong Catholic how it was in your home in Texas that your Catholic faith was lived and how that influenced your life choices after that. Well, my parents uh, were very firm about raising us in the faith. I have two siblings, a younger sister and a younger brother. And um, you know, we went to Catholic school growing up and just their example was a huge influence on my life. Uh, you know, it wasn't just going to Mass on Sundays, it was, you know, praying before meals, praying before bed, wow. reading uh, C.S. Lewis and, oh, wow. and all this. Um, so that was, and they sent us to Catholic school. Catholic education was a really big part of our lives. And um, my parents' example, you know, like the, the prayer and the, the, just the solid Catholic family they built was really influential in my life and continues to influence it today. After that wonderful basic influence at home, you did do something very actually daring, is to decide to study acting and to become an actor. What um, were these, you said in your website, crazy and improbable series of events that led you into your profession? Right. What might they be? Well, I think underlying all of it was my mother's love of stories and she would read to us growing up again C.S. Lewis but everything I mean just constant stories and so I just had this innate love of stories that I wanted to share and and be able to present in some way as I grew up um, and then in high school I started doing theater but that was very strange because I went to a high school of 12 students so who was the audience <laughs> our parents <laughs> Yeah, um, so, but I loved it and I thought, well, I'll major in this in college, which looking back was oh, yeah. incredibly naive to think that I would actually be able to, I would actually be any good at it because I, I you know, in, in the school of 12, it was great, but that was because there was no one else there. Um, so how did you even choose the school then? You went to Dallas, I right? went to University of Dallas. Um, I went there largely, it was, uh, well, my dad went there. And then I knew I wanted a Catholic school, I knew I wanted to study theater, and I knew I wanted to study abroad. So that sort of limits your options. And I didn't want it to just be sort of Catholic, I knew I wanted it to be really Catholic and have a really solid Catholic education. So I only had a few choices and having grown up hearing about it, I just felt like the right fit for me. And it did turn out to be so. It was it wonderful. It really was a good fit. Mm -hmm. So you finish at UD, but then you wind up doing graduate work? Uh, at West Virginia University. Uh, which was, again, really just, I did never intend to be there, but it was definitely God's plan. Uh, the head of the program there, of the MFA program, was actually an alum of University of Dallas. So that's how I got uh, hooked into that. Spent three years there and just really expanded my craft. I learned a lot about myself as a person. It really, even though I wasn't in a Catholic environment, it really deepened my faith because for the first time, my faith was integral to me and not just a part of my environment, it was a part of me despite the environment around me not being Catholic. I met some amazing people, some wonderful friends, and just having those friends who weren't Catholic and seeing that that core part of me was still just as important even without the other trappings around me, it really inspired me and really deepened my faith ultimately. 
So I looked and really did a lot of research. So I hope other people will go to your website and see if you just hit Audrey Ahern, you will find lots. And I found out this, that you have done in your young life so far, some very good theater, Shakespeare included, film, commercial, voiceover, and print. But somehow you ended up at one point recently with St. Luke Productions. So introduce us to Leonardo de Philippus and St. Luke Productions and how that became right now the center of your acting life. Right. Well, uh, St. Luke's made a movie about St. Therese about 10 years ago, and I had seen it when I was in high school. So I knew about the company because of that film. Uh, about three, two years ago, I was just going through a rough time. I didn't feel like I was really living out a, a vocation. I, I didn't want to just be living for myself, just building this career for myself, and I, I felt like it wasn't really giving to anybody. Um, so I thought, well, maybe that company that made the movie, St. Therese, is hiring. So I looked them up, and they were looking for an actress to play St. Therese. So I did some research. I looked at the company. Went, they have um, their website is wonderful. There's oh, stlukeproductions.com, yeah. where there's uh, tons of videos of all of our productions. And so I had seen those, and I thought, well, these are they seem really powerful. Um, you know, we have Maximilian about St. Maximilian Colby, John Vianney, uh, Faustina and the passion, and so I saw all of these videos and, and just thought, well, this seems like a great company to be involved in. So I sent in my resume and my audition video, and they uh, called me, it, it was a while till I heard from them, so I, I thought, well, this is it, that's it, that wasn't what God oh, wanted for me, but then uh, I did hear from them several months later and um, did a Skype audition, and then went in, in person and auditioned, and really got to know the company, and got to know Leonardo, De Filippis and his wife Patty and just I saw what a really wonderful giving couple they are and how the passionate they are about their ministry and and I when I left I was like I know this is something I want to be a part of it something God's calling me to be a part of and it's just been it's been such a blessing. Tell us just a little bit more because it might be nice for people who will probably remember that KNXT has aired several of the wonderful programs of Leonardo but you may not know some of the wonderful presentations. Let's go over them one more time. So the passion mm -hmm. is, from what I hear, the last time that Leonardo will be doing it himself. Yes. Tell us about his last hurrah on that one and that you're looking for a young mm -hmm. replacement, no? Tell yes. us about the passion. Well, so the Passion is, it's the si last six chapters of the Gospel of Luke, and it's, uh, Leonardo tells it, he takes on all the personas, so he, he plays Christ, but he also plays Caiaphas and Pilate and, um, and the crowd and the apostles and everybody. He plays all of those, um, and it's a really beautiful production. He's played it 425 oh times my. in the last 35 years. Um, so he's now looking for someone else to take on the role. So we are asking any of our viewers, if you love that program and would like to be the next Leonardo, mm -hmm. be in touch. Now that would be Leonardo de Filippis, not Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> they're, they're related, but not, not that much. Um, what about um, Vianney, which is another one of Leonardo's wonderful mm -hmm. presentations? Yes, yeah, so that's the story of St. John Vianney, uh, the Curie of ours. It's a beautiful production, a lot of the words are the direct words from his sermons. So he's directing, talking to the audience and telling them this beautiful sermons about how much he loves his people, um, but how they need to straighten up their act because this is what uh, the Curie of ours did and he, he transformed their town. He had some um, really intense struggles with the devil, like physical struggles, so we portray that. There's a, a screen in the background that plays some of the other, so some of the other characters come up on the screen. So that really makes those the townspeople and Satan and all these other characters really come to life. It's a really powerful production and it's actually inspired some vocations. Definitely. So. And speaking of vocations, there would be the powerful film of Maximilian Colby. Yes. What would you like to say about that? 
So that's another live production about St. Maximilian Kolbe, and it's again um, multimedia. So we have a screen in the background that shows some of the images of Auschwitz, um, some of the images of his uh, printing press that he started this uh, uh, magazine for the Immaculata, for the mission of the Immaculata. Um, it's a very beautiful production and, um, again, very powerful and very timely for this day and age because there's a lot of uh, his struggles with the government and, and just trying to stand up for religious freedom and when it was very difficult. And it, it's a very powerful and timely production. Speaking of a very timely production, we're going to talk about yours. I know you don't want to, but we're going to. Therese, the story of a soul. Why don't we see that clip right now and we'll let you talk to us about what it's like doing this magnificent show. Uh, let's play that clip, Therese, The Story of a Soul. Oh Jesus, I want to tell all little souls how indescribable is your love. If you found anyone more unworthy than I am, which is impossible, you would grant that soul even greater graces than you have granted me. All he would have to do is abandon himself to your infinite love and mercy. Yes, I feel it. Even though I had on my conscience all of the sins that can be committed, I would still go in confidence and love and throw myself in Jesus' arms. For I know how much he loves the prodigal child that returns to him. You'll see. I will send down a shower of roses. That is a beautiful trailer, and um, but it raises some questions to me. We, we heard how you landed the role because mm -hmm. it you didn't get it immediately, they, they got back to you finally, and then you land the role. Now, how did you prepare, and what did you need to learn that really became uh, maybe a challenge you had to uh, accept? Well, St. Charles is actually my confirmation saint. So you had, you were one leg up on that one. So I had read the story of a soul twice before. <laughs> um, but I read it again. I actually read it before my audition, and then after I got the job, I read it again. And then I read it this past summer again, so I've read it five times. Um, but I get something new out of it every time. I also read uh, The Last Conversations, which is everything she said on her deathbed to her sisters, and it's beautiful and profound and very difficult to read, but just, I mean, it just touches your heart just deep, deep down. Um, so I read that, and I just really started thinking about not only what could I do to play her, but what could she teach me? So that's, it was a different approach because normally as an actress, I'm just looking, well, how can I sort of approach this character and fit myself into her, into her and how can I get into her mindset? But I was like, okay, well, this is different because I have to let her to get into my mind. And so I'd say the biggest challenge, while the acting is certainly a challenge, the biggest challenge for me is becoming more like St. Therese in my life which is a lot <laughs> harder yes. than portraying a role on stage. So the acting's never done <laughs> because I'm always trying to be better at being like St. Therese and it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's beautiful that you would see it that way. So is that maybe the first role, I don't know, that has worked on you that way? In that way, wow. yes. I've played other roles where the characters taught me a little bit about myself, but it was more me exploring myself as rela in relation to the role rather than me letting the role completely fill me. It's a, d it's a completely different beast. <laughs> it is, and it's a beautiful, beautiful thing you shared. We're gonna take a break right now for a minute, but do not go away, because we'll be back with Audrey Ahern to share more about St. Therese and about St. Luke Productions. Stay tuned. KNXC thanks all its loyal viewers and respected businesses who have supported your Catholic television station. Now you can support KNXT with program underwriting by having your name, your company's name, or organization associated with your favorite program. Detailed information about you or your company will appear before and after each program or day part you select. Keep the quality and spiritual message alive and make a difference. Call 559-488-7440 today or go online at knxt.tv to find out more about program underwriting on KNXT. 
360. Welcome back to FaithWorks. I'm here with um, Audra Ahern, who happens to be getting ready tonight for a performance at the Shrine of St. Therese, where I will be there with the crowd um, enjoying her performance. We've just seen a little clip of it in the first um, half of the program. You did want to talk a bit about some of your colleagues over at St. Luke's, mm -hmm. other people in the cast for other shows. Tell us about um, St. Luke a little more. Yeah, so it started 35 years ago, and since then we've been doing live dramas across the country. Currently, we're casting for our newest show about Father Augustus Tolton, who was the first African-American priest. Um, it's a really exciting opportunity, and we're looking for the right man who's just really on fire to spread the gospel and to share his talents for God. So we're looking for an African-American actor between the ages of um, 30 and 40 who is really ready to take on this challenge. Um, and it's just, it's such a beautiful role. He really gave his life for his people. Uh, he escaped from slavery with his mother when he was a little boy. They escaped to Chicago and he really felt his vocation to be a priest, but he wasn't allowed at any of the American seminaries. So he had to go over to Italy oh, to become a priest geez. and he expected he'd be sent to Africa uh, to serve the people there. But uh, they said, no, you need to go back and serve your people. So he wound up getting sent back to Chicago, wow. and he just gave his life and just, and until he, I mean, he, he died basically from exhaustion from serving his people, and he was just so passionate about it. And he really built a community for these Catholics that had no community at all. So it's such a beautiful opportunity, and we're just really looking for that right man who's on fire and talented and, and ready to sh share the gospel. So we want those who are watching not only to think of themselves, but if you know of other people that you think this would be a good thing to offer them, would they go to the website at um, yeah, St. So Luke Productions? Yeah, so if you go to stlukeproductions.com, there's a link to casting, and you can get all your information there, so. Mm -hmm. Speaking of information, you're on this um, North American tour mm -hmm. with Therese. Tell us, um, what has, where has it brought you so far, <laughs> and where is it going next? Well, it's taken us all over. We've been to uh, Washington, Oregon, um, Texas, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, New York, New Jersey, uh, Nova Scotia, California several times, uh, Nebraska, Michigan, Illinois. Um, I think I'm missing some. But, but that's <laughs> wonderful. And it, it, it would depend on a parish trying to be on your um, itinerary. Right, right. Well, we're really glad that's St. Rita's in Tulare, and St. Peter the Apostle in Lemoore, and um, the Shrine of St. Therese in Fresno were able to catch the possibility and have you. Um, we're just really glad that happened, but if you are interested in St. Luke Productions coming uh, during this year or next year, it might be that you need to get in touch, stlukeproductions.com. Go check out the website for possibilities of um, scheduling an event. One thing that I also read in your, um, your, your website, it's really interesting. To be an actor, it takes a lot of skills. Here's some of the skills that are listed under um, Audrey Ahern. Soprano, Irish step dance, improvisation, proficient in IPA, dialects including uh, British RP, Irish and Deep South and Russian, character voices fencing, unarmed combat, Pilates, Suzuki method, training in Meissner technique, Stanislavski method, whistling and can sing like a chicken and valid driver's license. I'm wondering out of that tremendous list of very <laughs> great skills, the ones that you do fall back on consistently in your work, especially let's say in portraying Therese, what would be some of the techniques, methods that you would like to thank for the training you have? Right, so the Meissner technique uh, was basically the fun foundation of my graduate training. Um, it's a, it was founded by Stanford Meisner, who was sort of a disciple of Stanislavski, who was one of the greatest acting teachers, basically the first really great acting teacher in theater history. And this technique is basically all about listening and responding to the other person on stage. And it's actually, so I actually think it was like an analogy to the Christian life, because when you're on stage, you shouldn't be thinking about yourself. You should be thinking about the other person and what you want to do or to the response you want to generate from that other person. So it's sort of analogous to the Christian life. You don't want to be thinking about yourself. You want to be thinking about the other person. So this technique is all about learning to let go of yourself and to really focus on the other person. 
I'm doing a one-person show, though. So, <laughs> but the audience then becomes the other, the other person. person. So what do I want the audience to feel? How can I get them to respond in the way that I want them to respond? How can I make them feel how much God loves them? How can I make them know how much His mercy means? And so that, to me, is the, the foundation of, of really all my acting work, but in, including with the show especially. Are there people that we would know who are skilled in these disciplines? Because sometimes we do know, oh, method actor. That person, he or she, has this real depth of s always coming up with a performance. Is there anybody you wanted to mention that would be someone who is also in that same school of thought, school of training? Right, there are so many actors that have been trained in the Meisner technique. Um, so there's a famous school in New York, the New School, that was founded by William H. Macy. And so he's huge on this. Oh, William H. Um, wow. Yeah, so that's a huge, um, he's sort of like one of the ones that really got the ball rolling and became made this very popular uh, method for training. There are, I mean, a number of actors. I'm sure that probably half the people and in Hollywood And some of them are on like the lit. The Late Show. Is yes, yes, Stephen Colbert, Stephen Colbert is, is Meisner trained as well. I, I, I had well. to mention mm -hmm. Stephen because <laughs> if you think somebody is is good just because he's Catholic, <laughs> he's also a, a Meisner skilled person. Um, one program we'd like to show right now to feature another one of your great artists is um, Maria Vargo. And why don't we show the powerful presentation of Faustina, Messenger of Divine Mercy, see this clip, and then you could refer back about the importance of Faustina during this year of mercy. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? How long shall I put up with you? And how long will you keep putting me off? Prepare your soul for great suffering. You will encounter disapproval and persecution. Sister Faustina claims that the Lord told her to paint an image of him. She believes she's a visionary. Jesus, show me the way. Call upon my mercy on behalf of sinners. I desire their salvation. Help me. Don't leave me alone. Why should you bother about other souls? You ought to be praying only for yourself. At three o'clock. Implore my mercy. How the devil was pulling on me. Faustina, you are the object of my hatred. What did I ever do to you, God, that you hate me? Oh! All this for the sake of souls. Jesus, I trust in you. We had a program on FaithWorks, the very first one, we mentioned Faustina, that was with Father Peter, and then we had Father Peter back a year later, two months ago, and he brought up more about Faustina because Year of Mercy, we are celebrating this, there'll be World Youth Day coming up. All of this leads us to wonder, how is there a connection, and you told me there is, between St. Therese and St. Faustina? Tell us about this. Right, well, so uh, St. Faustina really brought the devotion to the Divine Mercy really to the forefront, but St. Therese is herself an apostle of mercy. I mean, her whole little way, her whole story of a soul is written with this knowledge of God's mercy and, and how as a little soul, you can still be a great saint, not because of your own merits, but because Jesus is so intimately and divinely merciful. So. St. Therese really started this whole new way of thinking. It wasn't a really a popular way of thinking, especially in that day and age. People were very uh, focused on the rudiment, like what you need to do to get to heaven. You have to follow these steps. And so at that time, it was a huge break from um, most thinking. So she started that, and then St. Faust Faustina sort of came along and, and took it a step further. St. Therese actually appeared to St. Faustina at one point. And so there's, a, there's an, an intimate connection between these two saints. They're both, I mean, huge for the year of mercy. And it, I mean, what a beautiful example they both give. Did you want to say anything about how this program with Maria Vargo came to be to the side? Um, was there some thinking at St. Luke's about the real need that we've got to put Faustina out there for people? 
So when we launched the show three years ago, no one had any idea that this would be the year of mercy, of course. That's so right. it's uh, completely, you know, God's providence that it was ready for it for this year when it was. I think when Leonardo and Patty decided to do the show, their thinking was largely that we live in such a broken world and so many people are hurting. Faustina not only tells the story of St. Faustina and Divine Mercy, but it also tells the story of, um, there's, there's two parallel modern stories, one of a dying man and one of a woman who's gone through um, some abuse. She's, she's had an abortion um, and their journey to forgiveness and finding God's mercy. So those two stories, when you intertwine them with the story of Faustina, is extremely powerful and extremely needed for our time today. Well, two parishes were blessed in the diocese. That would have been St. Elizabeth Ann Seton down in Bakersfield and St. Joachim in Madeira to have Maria Vargo come by and become for them Faustina. We want to thank them for that treat they had, but invite all of you who saw that clip to say, can't we get on the list? And you can if you just be in touch with St. Luke's Productions. They're giving me that sad signal that we're sort of like got a minute left or so. So I guess the question would be, what would you um, want to share with us, maybe a last thought about the Year of Mercy and how it is that um, you'd, you'd share with our viewers your, your insights into this wonderful year we're celebrating? I think I have to I have to channel St. Therese here. <laughs> I think a lot of people, um, they struggle with feeling unworthy. How can I be loved by God? I've done this, I've done that. Maybe not even big sins, but just these little like things that drag you down and you keep doing, you fall into the same sins over and over and over again. How can I possibly be a saint? How can God possibly love me? St. Therese, I mean, that's her whole message, that God loves us so much more than we can ever even dream or imagine or even want him to love us. He exceeds the love that we ask for. And I think that I would just hope that people just know that. And I mean, I don't always act that way. <laughs> I, I struggle feeling that way myself, uh, but I think just knowing that, just know how much God loves each person and that he's always gonna be more than you could ever ask for. What a perfect program we have for you in this year of mercy to have had a visit with Father Peter and then a visit now with Audrey Ahern sharing the mystery of divine mercy and love, this time through the person of Therese. She is the patroness of our diocese. The Shrine of St. Therese is celebrating its 60th anniversary this year. We want to thank Audrey for coming by and for doing this program. And we hope you'll all be in touch with St. Luke Productions to have them come and visit your parish. Till next month, God bless.